Hi and welcome to the Whimsical Wife YouTube channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to revamp an old cane chair from painting the base to upholstering the cushions. I'll show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to turn a sad old chair into a statement piece for your home. So let's jump into it. After hauling home your treasured find, it's time to get stuck into transforming it. The first step is to remove the cushions and other pieces of hardware off the chair in preparation for painting it. Sand the chair base with 120 grit sandpaper and wipe it over with a damp cloth. I recommend using a spray paint that is a paint and primer in one. This skips a step of having to undercoat. Then paint away and let it dry. It's time to start upholstering the cushions. The first step is to make the piping for the edge of the cushion covers. To do this, cut one inch strips of your chosen upholstery fabric using a rotary cutter. Make sure you have enough cut for the lengths you will need to pipe around the cushion. The next step is to pin six millimeter braided cotton piping cord inside the one inch strips of fabric that you have just cut. Pin the wrong sides together close to the cord and repeat this all the way to the end. If you have a long length of cushion to pipe, I would recommend sewing the one inch strips of fabric together before pinning the piping cord inside. Once the piping has been pinned, it is time to sew it all up. Attach a zipper foot to your sewing machine and start sewing the pinned piping along the edge. Make sure that you sew hard up against the piping cord for a firm finish. If the casing is not sewn tightly to the piping cord, it will not give the cushion a nice finish at the end. There you have it, you have finished your own customised piping. Now it's time to start covering the cushions and attaching the piping. Cut out a piece of fabric to size for the base cushion. Make sure the piece overlaps to create an envelope. This is how you will put in and take out your cushion. If you have the skills, add a zip. But for the novice, this is how you get away with no zip. Cut another two pieces of fabric for the side piece of the cushion. Always make sure you add an extra inch or two around the piece for seam purposes. Pin a seam along both short edges of the large piece of cushion fabric. Sew along the pin seams at both ends. Drape the fabric right side down over the cushion and make sure to evenly overlap the envelope opening. The best way to do this is to measure it and pin it in place. The next step is to get the side fabric piece and start pinning the piping around the edge of the cushion. To do this, pin the piping along the edge of the cushion against the main piece of fabric. Then pin the side piece on top of it so that the piping is sandwiched between these two pieces of fabric. I would recommend starting the piping at the back of the cushion so that you will not see any joins along the front. 
Trim any excess fabric as you go, but make sure that it's better to leave more on until the end. Continue to pin the piping along the corner of the cushion, making your way around the entire edge. Repeat this step on the other side of the cushion. To connect the two ends of the piping, unpick back about an inch and a half and pin the two pieces of fabric right sides together so that it is firm and in line with the rest of the piping. Remove the cushion insert and sew. Once you have sewn the piping joint together, trim the piping cord so that it fits in line with the rest of the piping. Press the cord into the casing and pin the wrong sides together. Sandwich the piping joint back into place and pin between the two pieces of fabric. It's now time to sew the piping cord into place. Sew around the entire edge of the cup. When sewing around the corners, I find I get a better finish if I snip the corners around the edge. This allows for more movement and it allows for easier sewing. Corners are difficult. If you find that you are not catching the piping into place when sewing around the corners, try coming at it from a different angle. Once you have sewn the piping into both sides of the cushion, turn it the right side out and trim any excess cotton on the outside. Turn back the wrong way out and trim back the edges to about 2 cm from the seam. Once you have done this, go back and either overlock the edge or do a zigzag stitch all the way around to stop the edges from fraying. Turn the cover the right side out place the cushion insert back inside the cover. I find folding the cushion in half while inserting it into the cover is the easiest way to put it back in. Gently ease the cover back into the cushion so that it fits nice and snug and smooth and that you finish with a great look. Repeat the same process with the back cushion and if you feel like it, a bottom cover for the cushion to sit on. Now it's time for the fun part, putting it all back together. I've put all the hardware back onto the chair ready for the cushions to be attached. The next step is to staple the bottom mat in place with a staple gun. Attach the elastic straps to the back of the chair to hold the mat into place. Place the back cushion over the frame and manoeuvre into place. Staple the cushion skirt at the back of the chair. This hides the underneath of the chair. I simply copied the original cushion template to achieve this look. Place a bottom cushion into place and there you have it. Voila! But wait, I have an idea. That's better. This is a life.
Thanks for watching my bamboo chair revamp tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day.